good afternoon from sunny Honolulu. Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii, welcome, one and all. Today we have an exciting topic, at least for a lot of us, and that is the fact that Honolulu has a brand new energy code. What in the world is an energy code? Well, when you build a home or a building, you have to follow certain codes. Plumbing code, fire code, electrical code, and the energy code ensures that the building is built for maximum energy efficiency. That is, you're using efficient equipment and you're controlling that equipment so it's on only when you need it. That way, you get all the comfort, all the safety you need at reduced electricity prices, and that helps us all. My reducing the burning of fossil fuel here on Oahu. So this code applies just to Honolulu. And by way of background, building codes are upgraded every three years. Why is that? Because technology keeps on improving and knowledge keeps on improving. So we reflect those improvements in the national codes. And it applies to plumbing, electric, coal fire, and, and so forth. So what does Honolulu's new energy code look like? This, in this case, it applies just to what are, what's called low-rise residential. Those are buildings, either our traditional single-family homes or apartment buildings that are maximum three stories or less. In other words, they're basically a walk-up apartment type uh, buildings. Uh, next slide. And we're moving from the 2015 energy code to the 2018. And you say, well, why are we lagging behind? Shouldn't it be a later code? Yes, it should, but stuff happens and delays come and we need to, de to deliberate about with many parties about what the new code is gonna look like, and that just plain old takes time. So next slide. So why do we focus on the energy code? If you look at the graph, way up top represents the way that homes and buildings were built beginning about the year 2000, and that downward slope means that with every three years, we improve, improve, improve the energy use intensity of those buildings. That means for every square foot of space, you're using less energy. And this is while all the new bells and whistles are being added, added, added. How do we do that? By specifying the best of the energy efficient equipment and the envelope the roofs, the windows, the walls. And we get, in Hawaii's case, we let less heat in and we cool the space in a much more efficient manner. And way down the lower right, you will see zero. And that means that as a national goal, all new homes and buildings shall be zero net energy by the year 2030, and that means that the, re the energy use in those homes and buildings shall be so low that when you put PV, photovoltaic, or whatever on the roof, or you have a remote source of clean renewable energy, that renewable energy amount will equal the amount of energy being used at that uh, home or building. Very ambitious goal, and we're, we're on track. Technologically, it's feasible already. Next slide, please. So what is the sequence for Honolulu? The building, the city council, in its wisdom, voted to adopt the energy code. It went into effect on November 23rd. Just what, 10, 10 days or so ago. So this code is in effect right now. 
Next slide, please. Oh, I should mention that the neighbor island uh, codes are, they're all looking at adopting 2018, but they haven't uh, gotten to their final solution yet. Now, there's three documents you need when complying with the energy code. One is the national document on the left. That's what's decided at the national level. And Hawaii is very active, incidentally, in participating at the national level, striving to maximize energy savings and bring down costs. Then there are the Hawaii amendments. And those basically have to do with the fact that we have this beautiful climate where we don't need heating, but we do need a lot of cooling. And that could be either active cooling with air conditioners or passive cooling, but just taking advantage of our beautiful climate. And then you have the Honolulu amendments that start with the Hawaii amendments and then amend from there. And we'll be focusing today on the Honolulu amendments. Next slide, please. So we have, just for very basic review, the energy code divides buildings into residential, again, three stories or below. Those are just basically walk-up apartments or single family, and commercial. And high-rise residential apartment buildings are considered commercial. Why? Because they include elevators. And once you get into buildings with elevators, everything gets a lot more complicated and you get a lot more safety issues in there. So any building, four stories and above, is considered a commercial building. Now, when you have a mix of commercial and residential, that means that usually the bottom floor has, say, retail spaces, and then you have a three-story building with residential above that. Though that residential portion is considered residential, a commercial portion where you're having a retail space, office space, that is resident, uh, commercial, so you have to mix those two up. Uh, next slide, please. So you have different options for uh, complying with residential codes. The most common one is called the prescriptive option, which we'll be dealing primarily with today. And that is simply your wall insulation shall be X, your roof insulation shall be Y, and you shall use this type of cooling equipment. You shall have efficiencies in your plumbing and so forth. You just check off the boxes, check, check, check. And then you have the performance option where you say, I want to design differently. And so you calculate what your energy use would be if you followed the prescription path. And then you say, I want to design this way instead. And you prove through calculations that your design is equal to or lower than in energy use, the prescriptive. And then you have the you know, simulated performance. There's something called energy modeling, and you can model the building according to what you want. And then you have the energy use index, where you are given a rating from 1 to 100, and you prove that your own design, again, this is individual design, is equal to or lower than the uh, model code from prescriptive. Uh, next slide, please. So one uh, of the very unique features of Hawaii's code is the tropical zone code. And that is where a home is maximum 50% air conditioned. Now, what, how could that be? Well, if you have a two-story residence, and the first story is your living room, kitchen, and so forth, you might be comfortable there just being cooled with ceiling fans and a lot of uh, windows through trade winds. But you like to sleep in air-conditioned space. So on the second floor are your bedrooms, and each one of them 
would have uh, their own little, what are called split systems, very small air conditioning systems. And they have to comprise less than 50% of the area. So if you get to less than 50%, you're considered a tropical home. Now, what else do you have in a tropical home? You have ceiling fans because they are the most efficient way of keeping cool except for windows. You situate your windows such that the you know where the trade winds are coming from. You have the large openings for the trade winds to come in. And then you have windows on the opposite side to let the trade winds go out. So you have a breeze through your room. May, many of us are fortunate enough to live in such homes, and we're just taking advantage of the fact that we live in the most beautiful uh, climate in the world. And of course, that reduces the cost of building the building because you don't have to put all that expensive equipment in, and your utility bill goes way, way down. And another requirement is that you must have uh, solar water heating. In the old days, uh, the resistance heating, you know, those old fashioned water heaters where you turn it on and it makes hot water by just making hot the rods inside the water heater very hot, very, very inefficient. It used to comprise as, as much as 40% of the entire energy use in a typical non conditioned home. Well, now you must have solar water heating, but if you can't afford solar water heating or you have other restrictions, you can apply for a variance and you might get a uh, heat pump instead. Uh, next slide, please. So a big change here is that the 2015 code required efficient lighting such that incandescence the old fashioned lights that you and I grew up with, where you, if you touch them, you literally burn your fingers. Those were banned by the code because back then we had the compact fluorescent lights, the curly Q lights, or if you are in other spaces, you have the fluorescent lights up in the ceiling. And these numbers that are now banned. Uh, were required to just discontinue the use of incandescent lights. I mean, each one of those lights was a little mini furnace. Do we need more heat or less heat in Hawaii's homes and buildings? Less. So we got rid of those old-fashioned incandescents, and now we've taken this a step further, and this is unique, to Honolulu, where the definition of an efficient light that you must use is 30 lumens per watt. That's the equivalent of miles per gallon. And the LEDs, light emitting diodes, are far more efficient than even the uh, fluorescents were. And the fluorescents have mercury in them. Mercury, highly, highly toxic. So you have greater efficiency and far less electricity expense dealing with LEDs. And this uh, provision effectively forces you into uh, LED lights. And by the way, they are cost competitive or even cheaper than the in fluorescents and Hawaii Energy, the people who give the rebates, they incentivize LED lights very heavily so you can pick these up at your hardware store really, really cheaply, or your contractor can do the same. So you're getting a whole lot of benefit. If you, the incandescence could get up to over 300 degrees, which is about the temperature of an oven for baking things. Whereas with the LEDs, you can put your hand on them, even a, a larger LED, and at the base, you'll feel a warmth. And that is all the heat they're giving out. And that's just another uh, hands-on way of measuring efficiency. The less heat is produced, the more efficient the 
device is. So just a little side note, if you haven't converted to LEDs in your home, if you want to save energy and be more comfortable, convert to LEDs. That's what the code requires too, is for a new, new construction. Next slide, please. Uh, ceiling fans. This was the object of much, much, much discussion with the developers. And what we, the Energy Office, or the uh, Oahu Resilience Office, were advocating was that in new construction residential ceiling fans be in every living space, each bedroom, and then in the, the living room. And we had long discussions with developers, and we reached a compromise where a ceiling fan junction box, that means a little electrical outlet in every in the roof or ceiling of every bedroom, every larger room in the residence, must it must be wired for ceiling fans. And then the customer, when she is buying a new home, will be offered the option of having a ceiling fan. And if she says yes, then the builder installs the ceiling fan there. And why do we love ceiling fans so much? They use 1 20th as much electricity as does a split system AC unit. And if you don't know what split system AC is, it's the new form of air conditioning, usually for individual small spaces like, like bedrooms. And they are way, way, way more efficient than the old fashioned uh, air conditioners that hang out from uh, uh, windows. And they look a lot better. And another option to ceiling fans is what's called whole house fans. And they're part of the code, they're allowed there. And that's when you have a big exhaust fan or series of exhaust fans up in the attic, and then you have vents that go from your living space up into the attic, and <laughs> then you have a way for the heat that goes up into the attic to exhaust out into the atmosphere. That's also a very, very, very energy efficient way of cooling your home. You, you, you promote a, a breeze through throughout the building, and as we've all experienced, if you have a breeze coming across your skin, you are much, much, much more uh, comfortable. Uh, next slide, please. So here's a biggie for Honolulu. Electric panel readiness. And that means when you build a new home, you must have number one in your electrical panel box. You must have a separate line dedicated to a photovoltaic uh, system. The photovoltaics are not required, just the wiring. You have to size your electrical equipment to accommodate photovoltaic, and then you must supply a wire up to under the roof where you anticipate a new owner might install a photovoltaic uh, system. So when you're ready, the contractor just accesses the electrical outlet right under the roof and plugs it right in. That saves immense amounts of money because you're doing all this wiring, you're doing the sizing while you're building the home anyway. So that's much, much, much cheaper than in some cases needing to uh, you know, go through concrete to put a new wire in and, and so forth. So what we, this is in anticipation of the huge, well, the majority, vast majority of all home roofs in Hawaii, including photovoltaic. I mentioned zero net energy. We need all the photovoltaic energy we can get. Incidentally, we, we lead by far, we lead the, uh, the nation in installation of photovoltaics. And by the by, we now are the solar contractors voluntarily or urge the urge the home owner to install batteries 
along with the photovoltaic panels. Why? Because in the middle of the day, we generate the photovoltaic panels that exist already generate more electricity than we need. So what do you do? You store it up in these big batteries that are about the size of refrigerators. And if it's a commercial system, you, you get a huge battery array. And then you, you have that energy waiting for the time when the sun goes down, you're no longer getting solar energy. So you fill it in with, fill that gap in with the batteries. Plus, we have what's called an evening peak where everybody is coming home from school, from work, and the tourists are coming home from the beaches, from shopping, whatever. Suddenly, your demand for electricity goes way, way, way up. And that's what these batteries are going to be uh, filling. So the utility now has a dual role, not just to supply the energy, but to modulate, to bring the battery electricity in and then uh, feed it back into the grid. It's, it's a much more complicated grid than it used to be. So that is required for new new homes. Next slide, please. Ah, electric vehicles. Not only must new homes be wired for photovoltaic panels, but for electric vehicles also. For a single family home, this would be generally one outlet in the garage. And you don't have to put an electric vehicle charger there. You just have to make it ready. You have to have the dedicated wire and then a plug in your garage so that when the homeowner is ready to install an electric vehicle charger, the contractor just unscrews the plate and boom, there's the outlet just uh, waiting for him. And again, you can imagine the dollar savings achieved when you do this with new construction. Why do we <coughs> need electric vehicles? Because when we have clean energy supply and everything, that vehicle is running on clean energy. It has virtually zero emissions. And we all know about the global warming, and we all know that we're behind. And if we don't take some pretty large steps in the near future, our children and our grandchildren are we're going to be living in very, very unhappy circumstances. We can give instance after instance of the fact that uh, half the world is burning up, another half the world is is flooding. We in Hawaii except for Lahaina, have dodged that bullet. We give thanks for that, but it is coming. And much of the world, as I said, is experiencing this. The shift to electric vehicles is really, really an important way of reducing uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so as I mentioned before, you can comply with the new code, either by the prescriptive method or by, and that, that just involves saying, check, 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 you need this, you need this, you need this, you need this. Or there's a performance alternative where you make a plan and say, I don't want to follow the code, but I, I know I need to design an efficient building so here's what I want to do. And then you do your calculations. If I followed the prescriptive method, I would consume X amount. I'm following my own method and the performance of my building is equal to or less than the energy used in the, by the prescriptive uh, method. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, this is the energy rating index and this is where you're actually shooting for zero as in zero fossil fuel emitted and you're given for a climate zone in hawaii 57 so you have to start with a base and again you're, you're shooting for very very low energy use so the 2006 code is the base of 100 and now, now we're allowed 57, so we've improved energy use in this case by 
43%. And then you design your own home to be less than uh, 57. And that involves you know, many, many efficiency measures, plus uh, generally uh, ph photovoltaics on the roof. And I didn't mention, and when you put photovoltaics on the roof, the heat gain coming through is virtually zero because you're blocking the sun's radiation and it's being absorbed by the photovoltaic panel. So you have that added benefit of having a, a cool roof under there. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, and additions. When you put a new room on your existing house, that new space must comply as if with, with new construction. And then you also have the option while you're there of bringing the whole house into uh, compliance. And you don't get extra points for that, but you do you know, ensure a very efficient home. And something that didn't get into the new code was cool roofs, where when you specify a new roof, the lighter the color of the roof, the more heat radiates off of the roof and into the atmosphere. And that is an absolutely great way of uh, reducing your energy consumption, having a healthier, happier home by not having the radiant heat coming through to you. Okay, farewell. And we are offering training, full-on training for the residential and commercial parts of the new energy code. If you're interested, we will have up on the, the link posted on the, the site right here, and just follow that on, and uh, you will be entitled to this wonderful training tomorrow and Wednesday. Thank you very much.